The Washington Wizards select. Tonight on Sports Talk, less than 24 hours from the NBA draft, Britt goes one-on-one -on -one with Bowie native and former Hoya, Chris Wright. And across Key Bridge, into Fairfax, Britt talks to George Mason's Cam Long. Raise your glass. Sports Talk with Britt McHenry starts now. Look at that. Oh. He's all over his shirt, his pants. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's going to drink oh. the ball. He's going to drink the beer. Look at, look at the shirt. Two local stars with one objective, taking their games to the next level. Tonight on Sports Talk, we'll hear from Georgetown star Chris Wright and George Mason's Cam Long as they reflect on their college careers and share their pro dreams. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for this edition of Sports Talk. I'm Britt McHenry. Well, the NBA draft is tomorrow night and the Wizards are fairly excited because they have the sixth overall pick, the 18th and 34th. They've worked out about 60 guys and Tuesday it was a guy you know pretty well, local product, who is a fan favorite and our Tim Brandt will tell you more. After 14 grueling team workouts, Chris Wright showed off his talents one final time in his own backyard. Rockets, Lakers, Bucks, Spurs, Pacers. Wright was a McDonald's All-American at St. John's College High School. He stayed close to home and continued his success at Georgetown, where he started point guard. Despite all his accolades, Wright came into the draft process with a chip on his shoulder. A lot of people were, which I, what baffled me was their question about toughness. Um, and if I would be the guy to play defense and play scrappy and all that stuff. Would the Bowie Maryland native want to continue to play in the phone booth? You'd better believe it. I remember being here when they, the first game ever in this building, when they played the Seattle Supersonics. I still got the ticket at home. Even if the Wizards don't let him keep the gear. Uh, they told us we got to get a shorts back. Aww. Whatever happens on Thursday, the Wizards will always have a place in Chris's heart. I hope they do well regardless of where I'm at because I'm a fan. And you just saw him right there. He played at Georgetown for the past four years. He led the Hoyas to three NCAA tournament berths. And he's also the pride of St. John's College High School. And he's here with us now. See enough of yourself right there? <laughs> <laughs> so you are on the brink. First of all, thank you so much for coming in. No uh, you are on the brink of potentially the biggest moment of your life mm -hmm. tomorrow night. What is going on in your head right now? Man, I'm, I'm very nervous, um, you know, anxious at the same time, but just, you know, I'm, I'm very nervous because I don't know which way it can go right now. So I'm just being patient and it's out of my hands and, you know, I'm leaving it up to God and hopefully he blesses me. So, um, which he always will. So I'm just nervous. <laughs> I was going to say, he's been pretty good to you so far. Yeah, he's been very good. <laughs> uh, what other teams have you worked out with? Well, I worked out with a total of, I think, 13 teams. Wow. Um, well, I started off with the Wizards. I went to the Lakers, Rockets, um, Golden State Warriors, Bucks, Pacers. You know, it's, it's, it was a lot of teams. It was, it was a tough June period mm -hmm. because I was on the road the entire time. So it was tough, but it was fun, and it's, you know, it's part of the part of your dreams. Part so. of the grind. So yeah. you're telling me you haven't slept much right now. <laughs> nah, not too much sleep. You in airports all day. You can sleep in airports yeah. <laughs> because you're in airports all day. But other than that, nah, not too much. What's your airport go-to food? <laughs> airport go-to food. I don't know. It's some, of, it's some of these airports I've never been to. <laughs> and I've never, you know, I've never experienced them. So majority of the time, I don't get too much. I try to just save that money and just you know, do what I got to do. I'm sure that'll, that'll come soon enough. Well, what's the feedback that you've been getting from some of these teams, especially the hometown team right here, the Wizards? Uh, well, I worked out for the Wizards yesterday, and it was the workout went pretty well. Uh, they said that I, you know, I did well. Actually, I had a great workout. Um, I shot the ball better. Um, defensively, they were really impressed, impressed my defense and just my tenacity and toughness. Yeah. So. You know, it's a lot of pluses. I, I've been getting a lot of um, positive feedback mm -hmm. from many teams, and uh, so I don't know, man. The draft is going to be it's going to be interesting tomorrow for several reasons, mainly because of the lockout. So I, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be a lot of trades, but um, we'll see how it goes. 
Now, we've seen a couple guys uh, work out there, Kyle mm -hmm. Singler um, and a couple other local guys. They looked gassed in the Wizards workout. Was it one of the more intense ones that you've been to? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I would say the most intense workout I've been to would was either Houston, because Houston you just ran full court and did a whole bunch of full court drills, or um, Winston's were up there, but Boston was tough. Boston was Boston a tough was, one. Boston was tough, because there's only four guys. There's usually six guys to work out, uh -huh. so you don't get any breaks with four guys. <laughs> and we were, they had us doing a lot of full court one-on-one -on -one and all that stuff, and then at the end, you have to run for three minutes. <laughs> And just just run. Yeah. So I was exhausted. <laughs> it was it was fun though. So you've mastered the faking the fatigue part pretty much. Oh, I, I mastered that in college because I didn't like coming out. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I had to learn how, a way to fake it. Which brings me to the next question. We have to bring up your your time in Georgetown, and your time playing with Austin. You guys mm -hmm. are have been friends since you were kids. Mm -hmm. Is this a bonding moment once again for you two? Have you talked? Uh, yeah, we talked. You know, actually, we had uh, we worked out together together in L.A. Uh -huh. uh, for the Lakers. So we talk, and you know, we try to keep up with each other in the process. But you know, Austin's my boy. I love him to death. But at the same time, we're we're focusing on ourselves because it's you know it's a big decision. I mean, it's a big step for both of us in Absolutely. our career. So um, I've kept in contact with him. He's been doing well. Um, everybody's amazed because he lost so much weight. How much did he lose? <laughs> I would say he lost about 20, 25 pounds. Wow. So he looks good. He, he's, he looks good. <laughs> What'd you say to him when you first saw him after losing all that weight? I just was staring at him because it's, it's so, you know, I mean, being at Georgetown, I've been around him every day for four years. <laughs> yeah. and it's like, you know, he looked like he was back in high school. So, <laughs> but no, it's, it, was a, it was good. And, you know, it's good for him. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, we definitely keep in contact. Not, don't want to bring up too many, you know, bad memories, but mm -hmm. from the NCAA tournament, you weathered a, a tough storm with your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't the outcome. VCU obviously went on to have an incredible run, so you can't blame yourselves too much. Right. How did you prep yourself for that game? I'm still wondering. Because I saw you out on the court probably with more heart than anybody. Did it bother you, and how did you get yourself up for that game? Uh, well, I wanted to finish on the court. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's tough. Being a senior and getting hurt at the time, then I guess the time was just terrible, you know. But you can't control that. And um, you know, I got cleared to play. I went through a week of practice, felt felt good and felt healthy. But it's it's one thing to practice and it's another thing to play. And when I actually got on the court, it was it was a big difference. And then to play against a team, VCU, who weren't missing a shot or a three. <laughs> yeah, they weren't missing. They weren't missing anything. Um, didn't help. <laughs> So, you know, it was it was tough, but in the end, I, you know, I'm glad I finished out on the court. And, you know, it was some bad moments, but we had some good moments also. You certainly did. Yeah. Plenty of those. Yeah. All right. Well, coming up, more of our conversation with Chris Wright and his thoughts on what the future may hold for him and the Hoyas as well, his alma mater. It's all coming up. Stay tuned. I was slipping into darkness. Yeah. Be the last one for you two together. Hold on, let's not get this twisted. There's going to be a next year for us. No, I, know <laughs> I understand that. what you're saying. It is, you know, together regardless together. wherever we go. Yeah, together. I mean, it's just we had a, we had fun off the court, on the court. You know, we were very close friends, and we and I enjoyed it. You know, it's been a lot of ups and downs. <laughs> That was Chris Wright after the Hoyas season, and this is Chris Wright now on Sports Talk. And uh, yeah, we shouldn't get it twisted because there is going to be plenty more years for you. <laughs> Definitely, it's going to be a lot of years. But you had such an Im impact on that program, so it's it's hard to not consider the time you spent there. What was one of your favorite moments at Georgetown? Um, on the court, one of my favorite moments, um, winning the Big East regular season my freshman year. Um, that was exciting because. I was hurt the entire Big East regular season. That was my first game back, the game we won um, the tournament. I mean, the one, the one we won the regular season championship. And DeJuan Summers hit like a big three from the right wing right in front of me to, you know, which was a big shot and probably won the game. But um, other than that, I don't know. Winning at the Dome was, yeah. was fun. Finally beating Pitt at Pitt. Uh, Every time we crush Villanova, <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much any big win. I mean, of course, when we played Duke and Pre President Obama was there, so that was that was special. 
that's cool. So, um, okay, now back to the draft tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, how much do you pay attention to mock drafts? Is it one of those things where it's hard not to check once in a while? I don't, I, honestly, I don't pay attention to them at all okay. because um, it's like, it would be me if I was a regular student you know, just okay. Let me put up NBA draft express. Uh, you know, something draft lottery, and I'll pick who I want to put on there, and that's it. So I really don't think it has any evidence or any type of truth to it. I mean, obviously the top picks mm -hmm. may be similar or something like that, but I don't really look at it because it really has no basis of anything. So if you're talking to a GM right mm -hmm. now and we were less than 24 hours away. We all know this, the talents and the, the heart that you have that you bring to the court. What would you say to a GM? How would you sell yourself? <sighs> <laughs> Pressure question Um, here. I don't know. I, I would be, I'll be honest, you know, I, I'll be, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm the best player in the world, but I feel like I can bring a lot to the table. Um, uh, leadership, mm -hmm. just, just an attitude, a desire to win. Um, you know, I'm talented, so you know I think that's the biggest thing. Um, but in terms of just being a a good person and doing what's asked of me, I have you know I do I've, I've proven that over the years I'll do whatever is asked of me. So um, just providing a spark wherever I can for. Real. And you seem to be making all your shots over that. Well, maybe not that nah, one. That. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on the editor for using that clip. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, what uh, what parts of your game at this point do you think that maybe need to improve on? Uh, my shooting. I have to just you know continue to be a better shooter um, to knock down open shots, open looks. But you know, just I think just getting accustomed to playing a different style of a brand of ball. Um, coming off a lot of pick and rolls and understanding the ins and outs of the NBA game, I think that's going to be important in my development. Um, no matter where I'm at, you know, it's going to be a matter of me how I'm defending ball screens and how I'm coming off ball screens because point guards are always in ball screen situations. Um, just understand the game, and it's uh, clearly it's a much longer season. So um, I don't know. I'm just excited. Hopefully. I land somewhere in there. <laughs> uh, you seem like a character guy. Like you bring some sense of humor to the court. Mm -hmm. Any nicknames with Austin or any uh, funny stories you can tell us as you move forward? Oh man. That will leave back with college maybe. <laughs> well, my nickname growing up and it's always stuck with me. My father gave me this name when I was a little kid. Um, is Lumpy. That's my nickname. Is Lumpy. And a lot of people, a lot of people before I, you know, started playing college basketball, they knew me as Lumpy. That was my nickname. Why? My, f I, I was clumsy. Okay. So I used to run into everything and whatever. So I'm Lumpy. But we call it free. Um, uh, we saw this actually at a, a sign someone had in the game. We call him Awesome. <laughs> awesome Freeman. Um, Hollis was Hollywood. Hollywood. Why? Yeah. Why that? He's from Cali. <laughs> <laughs> it's guy. not like the DMV, right? Nah, we we don't want to get into the East Coast West Coast thing, but yeah. you know. We're we're gonna take it back old school too. I think we have some high school video of you mm -hmm. uh, that we may want to run in in a second here. There you are. <laughs> it's so lumpy stuck with you in those days too, right? Yeah, that was that was lumpy. Uh, who do you who did you model your game after then and and now since you could potentially you know in a day be in the league? Mm -hmm. Who do you model your game after now? Uh, oh, look at the bounce. <laughs> <laughs> look at you, um, young one. Yeah, I was young. Uh, I, pr I try to model one game after guys like Jameer Nelson, uh -huh. Kyle Lowry. Um, I'm a big Chris Paul. That's, that's my parents. You my remember sister. that day? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> a lot of people there. Uh, look at my mother. <laughs> uh, um, Chris Paul. Uh, I just try to imitate any guard, really, any guard that's productive and does well in the league, you know, it's, you clearly could take bits and pieces from them, but growing up, I was a big Allen Iverson fan, yeah. um, but now I'm saying my favorite player is Chris Paul. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're taking you back down uh, old school memory lane there. Yeah. So if you, so you go to another team, um, or abroad, or wherever your career takes you, what have, what lessons have you learned from the DMV? You've been here through high school, yeah. college, I mean, you're as local as they get. Yeah, uh, well, it's definitely going to be a transition because if I don't end up with the Wizards, it'll be the first time away from home. Yeah. So that's going to be something that's different. It's going to be a transition. So like like I've said, I don't know anything else. You know, yeah. <laughs> I went to, my high school was probably 10 minutes from here. So, um, you know, I just, you know, 
with me, just the things I learned at school and just growing and maturing as I did over my four years, I think that'll help me mm -hmm. regardless of where I'm at, you know. Um, Come up with a dance, like John Wall? <laughs> nah, I'm a, I got my own style. Okay. I'm not going to copy. But John Wall got his, you know, got his thing down pat, so you can't take that. <laughs> All right. Thank All right. you thank so you. much. And coming up next, there's another sharpshooter, and he's looking to get into the league himself. George Mason's Cam Long checks in when Sports Talk continues. Thank you for coming back and staying with us. We're back here with Chris Wright. We didn't want to let you go just yet because it's a great opportunity to have you in studio. And we've talked a lot about going to the next level and, and what you have to do to work on your game. Tell me about tomorrow, though, maybe like the celebration moment or how, how do you plan on, you know, if you hear your name called, what will you be doing tomorrow night? Well, that was if the key word was if. If, <laughs> if I hear my name called, then we'll see. I might. You know, have a fun time, be around the city a little bit. But um, in terms of watching it and anything, I'm just going to be at home, my family, um, you know, a few close friends, family, whatever. And that's it. I'm not going to make it a big ordeal because it's not like I'm top ten or anything. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just, if if I get drafted, if I get drafted 60, the last pick in the draft, I'm going to party like I'm the first person. Yeah. So. Um, I think anywhere I go would be a blessing. I'm just, I'm just excited to be in this situation. So, it's, it's, it's fun, but it's also very nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You worked out. We actually run a talk to Cam Long too. I guess his uh, cell phone service isn't working that great right now. Uh, you worked out with Cam Long as well. You guys obviously must know each other. Uh -huh. He's right there at Mason. Uh, what was it like? Again, it's kind of like with Austin. You, you two right. know each other. What was it like working out with him for the Wizards? And what can right. you say about him as a player? Well, Cam, I, uh, me and Cam actually have a pretty long history. We played together in AU basketball. We both played in the same AU basketball team, uh, Blue Williams, for a year. Um, and Cam, I mean, he's just gotten better over the years, you know. <laughs> You know, I always give him a little grief because we beat them um, my senior year. He played at Freedom. Mm -hmm. um, and they tried to come to our house and beat us, but it wasn't happening. Um, <laughs> but no, Cam, is, he's a great player. He had a great great career in the CA. Um, very accurate shooter. Uh, very quick guard, uh, combo guard, about 6'3". Mm -hmm. you, know. you know, he's done well. And he's put himself in a position to, to you know, to make and get his name called also. So. You know, my hat goes off to him, mm -hmm. and you know, and you know, making the transition. He came here as a sophomore in high school, leaving Florida and leaving his family to come here. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a major step. And know? it worked from the same hometown. Believe right. Or not. We yeah. found that out. <laughs> exactly. So, I, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. But, <laughs> but yeah, you know, he, just making that transition as mm -hmm. a sophomore in high school, going to a new school. You know, how high school is high school is crazy anyway. Yeah. So, um, you know, he he did a great job, and it's paying it's paying dividends. What did we touched on it a little bit earlier? When VCU went on to the final four, I mean, you God. just kept seeing them killing every team, uh -huh. making three after three. I think their shooting percentage was like low 60s against yeah. you guys. Did you see that coming after they beat you? Did you think, wow, this team really is worth that, or did you think their time was gonna, it was going to come up soon? Uh, honestly, I didn't even watch the next couple of games, <laughs> but I, I can see them beating every game that they won. It made me feel better. So it's not just us that's getting whipped on, you know. Everybody else is getting whipped on. They made it to the final four, so that feels good, you know. Um, not that it feels good, but you know, it, it I guess covers it up a little bit. But um, I don't know. They just they got some great players, and not to mention they're a very junior senior team. They're an older team, yeah. so those are guys that's been around. Jamie Skeen originally went to Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's he can shoot the ball with the best of them. Yeah. Then they got like four other people that just don't miss. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm not one of those people that you know hate or anything yeah. like that. They they were the best teams on those days, and yeah. they you know they deserve to win. They did their thing. Yeah. All right, as you uh, wrap it up, as you move into your future, what words of advice uh, from JT3 from Coach will you take with you to help your game at the next level? Um, I just try to carry myself um, with a sense of. Uh, respect and pride and in a professional manner. Um, one thing about Georgetown, regardless if you finish your career there or you left early to go to the pros or whatever, you always carry that tradition on as a Georgetown basketball player. So it's important for me and you know the other seniors and guys you know to to remember where we came from yeah. 
and it's a lot behind the Georgetown name. It's a lot of tradition and a lot of pride behind the name. So to to go on and carry on and live your life, but live, you know, be a professional about yours and always, like a lot of people go into um, these workouts with sweats or, you know, flip flops, which is cool. I'm not knocking it, <laughs> I'm not knocking it, but I, you know, it's a job interview. So even if you're a regular student, it's, it's like, we, we're, we're, we're having a job interview, so approach it like a job interview. Mm -hmm. That's what you always said. so wear a nice shirt, some slacks, some shoes, so. I'm you sure know. you have big John Thompson there too, yelling oh, yeah. at you to yeah. sharpen up and look professional. No, yeah, definitely. They, they're they both there and they both, you know, say your image and the way you represent yourself carries, you know, carries a long way. And that's about it. Well, all right. Well, thank you. And we'll be back in a moment to add a little bit more to this edition of Sports Talk with at least one good reason to enjoy a cold one at the ballpark from basketball to baseball. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sports Talk. All right, we're going to transition now and go to Boston for our catch of the night. And a fan gets the honor. Check out where this ball lands, right in his beer. He's a happy camper. Chris Wright's not, though, because he's a Yankees fan, as he just told me. But hey, Fenway's happy, and there you go. What a catch. Well, that's it for this edition of Sports Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. And to Chris Wright, thank you for coming on. And the entire crew, it's been a pleasure. I'm Brittany McHenry, and I'll see you next time. Have a good night.